Hello, I'm the developer of the Horror Engine. In this video, I will guide you through the gameplay settings for the Horror Engine. Since there are many beginners out there, I'll take it slow and provide detailed explanations. If you're an experienced developer and already familiar with these steps, feel free to skip to the next section. Let's begin with the gameplay settings. Under the Default Values tab, there are three sections, Player Settings, Footstep Sound Settings, and Equipment Settings. Within Player Settings, you'll discover the default configurations for the player's movement abilities. Before making any changes, let's take a look at how the game appears with the current settings. Welcome to Horror Engine. You're on the over... First, let's disable this bothersome horror event. Alright, let's get started. These are the current values for walking speed, running speed, crouched walking speed, jump velocity, leaning amount, and leaning head angle. Let's modify them and see what happens. I will set standing height to 150 and crouched height to 30 centimeters. As a result, the character's standing height and crouching height will be shorter. Now let's modify the running speed and walking speed. As a result, the character will walk much slower, but run much faster. Let's change the crouched walking speed to 50 centimeters per second, and the crouching duration to 0.1 second. As you can see, the character now moves differently. Before moving on to the leaning settings, let's undo all of these changes. Let's set the leaning amount to 125 centimeters. This setting determines how far to the left or right the character can lean. Now let's set the leaning head angle to 15 degrees. This setting determines how far the character tilts their head when leaning to the left or right. Leaning duration determines how many seconds the character takes to perform this action. Jump velocity determines how many centimeters per second the character can jump upwards. Setting jump velocity to around 800 centimeters per second may result in the character taking damage due to jumping too high <coughs> and falling too fast. This is because the safe fall height is set to 300 centimeters. If we increase this value, the character will land safely and take no damage. Fall resistance determines the character's resistance to damage from falling. <coughs> As you can see, falling from this height results in the character's health dropping to 45. Increasing the fall damage resistance value will reduce the damage from falling. <coughs> smooth camera value determines how delayed and smooth the camera rotation will be. Decreasing the value will increase the effect. You can experiment to find your preferred value, or turn it off by unchecking it. Head bobbing value determines how much the character's head will bob when walking. Increasing the value will enhance the effect. You can also turn it off by unchecking it. Field of view controls the player's viewing angle. A higher value widens your perspective, while a lower one narrows it. Depth of field allows the player camera to clearly focus on the distance it is looking at while blurring the remaining distances. The aperture is set to 3 by default. Decreasing this value will increase the blur effect. Optionally, you can turn it off by unchecking the box. If you prefer not to see subtitles during in-game dialogues, you can turn off this feature here. Likewise, you have the option to enable or disable in-game notifications. Lastly, you can customize the damage sound effect, <coughs> death sound effect, <coughs> fear sound effect, <coughs> and you died sound effect settings here. Let's explore the footstep sound settings. The footstep sound interval determines how frequently the sound of footsteps occurs when the player walks. Reducing the default setting from 150 centimeters to 80 centimeters 
will make the character produce footsteps more frequently while walking. If the physical material the character is walking on is not specified, the default sound you set here will be produced. Other surfaces will produce the sounds specified for their physical materials. The options labeled Jump determine the sound when the character lands after a jump. You can customize all of these options with your preferred sounds. Allow me to demonstrate how to set the physical type of any material. I will place an object in the scene that the character can walk on, then create and assign a new material to it. As mentioned earlier, if the physical material is not set, the default sound will be produced. If you wish the material to represent a specific physical type, such as metal, you can easily set its physical material to Metal in the Details panel. This method can be applied to any material created or acquired from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. The Horror Engine includes seven preset surface types. However, if these are insufficient for your needs and you require additional surface type options, you can add them with a small modification. First, navigate to the Edit tab and then go to Project Settings. Once there, proceed to the Physics section. As explained in the first video, this is where surface types are created. Enter the preferred name for the new surface type you wish to create. After creating the new surface type, Proceed to assign it by creating a new physical material. To do this, navigate to the Audio folder and find the Physical Materials folder. Within this folder, you'll find the physical materials that come with the Horror Engine. Simply duplicate one of them and assign it the same name as the new surface type you just created to avoid confusion. Then, select the new surface type you've just created as its surface type. Now open the Horror Engine Blueprint, located in the Horror Engine folder. Double-click on the Footstep Headshake function under the Functions section. This area is where the Horror Engine manages footstep sounds and camera shake when the character walks. It periodically checks the type of surface the character is walking on using the trace method, calculates the distance the character is walking, and produces the correct sound if the necessary conditions are met. If the new surface type doesn't appear here initially, right-click on the Select node and choose Refresh Nodes. The new surface type will then become available. Repeat the same process with the node directly below it, which controls the character's jumping sounds. Now, you can assign the walking and jumping sounds to the newly created surface type. Finally, let's change the physical material of this ground here and check the result. And that's it. The eighth surface type is now functional. You can create more in the same way if you need additional surface types. Now, let's examine the equipment settings. But first, let me turn off the lights. Equip, Unequip Speed determines how many seconds it takes the character to equip and unequip the equipment. There are seven equipment items integrated into the Horror Engine character. These are Glow Stick, Flashlight, Lighter, Torch, Night Vision, Cameroid, and Pistol. Let's start with the Glow Stick. If Has Glow Stick is enabled, it allows the player to start the game already having a Glow Stick. Otherwise, the player will need to find and add it to the equipment. Glow stick duration determines the lifespan of this equipment. If this time expires, the glow stick will become unusable until a new one is found. Let's set this value to 0.1 minutes and test it. When you open the inventory, you can see the graph showing the remaining lifespan in the lower left corner. As you can see, after 0.1 minutes, the glow stick is dead and unusable. But if infinite glow stick is selected, Glow stick duration will be bypassed, and the glow stick will remain usable infinitely. Glow stick emissive intensity determines how much the glow stick will glow, 
Increasing this value will make the glow stick brighter. Glow stick light settings allows you to adjust the light emitted by the glow stick. The intensity value determines how much the glow stick illuminates the environment. Decreasing this value will reduce the amount of emitted light. The light color value, as the name implies, determines the color of the light it emits. If you want to change the color of the glow stick itself, open the Materials folder, then the Material Instances folder, find Glow Stick Light, and change its color. The attenuation radius value determines how far the light will spread. The source radius and source length values don't matter much at the moment, so I'll skip them. You can leave these values as they are, or change them and check the results. The Cast Shadows option determines whether the light casts a shadow. You can uncheck this if you don't want it to cast shadows for any reason. I will talk about the IES Texture option when I explain the flashlight. The Glow Stick On Sound and Glow Stick Off Sound options determine the sound the equipment makes when it turns on and off. Glow Stick is set to make a crackling sound only the first time it is used, so these options are left blank here. The flashlight options are nearly identical except for slight differences. So I will go through the different parts. The flashlight flickering start value determines the battery power percentage at which the light will begin to flicker. For example, if set to 50%, the flashlight will start flickering when the battery drops below that level. Setting this value to 100% means the light will always flicker, regardless of the battery level. The flashlight flickering speed value determines the speed at which the light will flicker. The flashlight light settings options are nearly identical, allowing you to fine-tune various aspects of the light, including color and intensity. The outer cone angle value is a property that specifies the width angle of the outer edge of the light. The IES texture is a file used to simulate realistic light profiles of light sources. Leaving this option blank will result in a more generic light effect. If you have different IES textures, you can import them into your project and select the desired one here. Lastly, you can customize the flashlight on and off sounds here. The lighter options are actually identical to the others. Feel free to experiment and find the settings that suit your preferences. The same applies to the torch. However, it comes with the Requires Lighter option. If this option is enabled, the player will not be able to light the torch if there is no lighter in the inventory. Additionally, it has the Fire Spark Sound option, allowing customization of the constant sound the torch will make when burning. The Night Vision options are similar to the others, with minor differences. The Night Vision has the ability to zoom in and out using the middle mouse button. The Night Vision Low Battery Warning value determines the percentage below which the battery will trigger a warning signal. As demonstrated, it gave a low battery warning when the battery dropped below the specified value. The Night Vision Maximum Zoom value determines how far the camera can zoom. Decreasing this value increases the zoom distance. Night Vision Light Settings does not require any intervention, but those who are curious can examine it. Night Vision Post Process Settings determines how the scene will look when night vision is turned on. For example, film grain intensity can be adjusted, color grading lookup table can be assigned, and temperature or saturation can be modified. The sound effects can also be changed according to preference. Cameroid allows the player to take photos during the game and store them in the inventory. The photo needs to be shaken for it to form on the paper. Before taking a photo, the flash feature can be turned on and off using the right mouse button. The Cameroid Photo Shake difficulty value determines how much the captured photo needs to be shaken to form on the paper. Cameroid flash settings allow customization of its flash. For example, the color of the flash can be changed here. Additionally, 
Similar to night vision, there are post-process settings. Here you can add grain to the photo or make the photo black and white. Taking photos can also trigger a specific horror event when the necessary conditions are met. The sound effects can also be changed according to preference. The last equipment on the list is the pistol. The pistol total ammo value determines how many bullets the player will have at the start of the game. The pistol clip capacity value determines how many bullets each clip will contain. The pistol clip ammo value determines how many bullets are already in the pistol. The pistol shoot distance value determines the maximum distance the pistol can shoot. The pistol shoot decal option determines the decal that will appear on the surface hit by the bullet. To shoot any object with the pistol and achieve results, the horror event must be used. Or the object to be shot must be a blueprint that is a child class of use. And the shoot event must be designed. We will examine the horror event system in detail in future videos. In this video of the Horror Engine tutorial series, I've tried to guide you through the gameplay settings in as much detail as possible. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.